Hey, man. Hey, Gary. Fancy appearing on what would Shatner do? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm free. Great. Okay. Thanks, mate. Better start researching Star Trek. Hmm. Oh, hi. We're just talking about this. Sound guy have gone on bloody strike. God, this is all I need to start off a new show. Hang on. Let me find out what this is all about. This isn't about money, is it? This isn't because of unions. This isn't because I'd said the Peshmo were a crap band, was it? Would it be okay if I sing a favourite song of yours by Depeche Mode? Okay then. I can't even sing. Ugh. Anyway, on with the show. See you in a minute. Simmons, and welcome to what? <laughs> Years ago, I was working on a gambling boat, and there was a man sitting at one of the tables, dealing cards and cutting them with one hand. I watched him for a while and got curious, so I approached him, and I asked him what he was doing. He said, well, you see, I'm actually practicing. He says, I've learned over the years how to cut to any card in the deck just using my one hand and my fingers. I've developed a sensitivity. I said, well, really, would you demonstrate? He said, absolutely. He goes, for instance, I can cut to any of the aces in the deck. And he picked up that deck in his one hand and gave it a cut just like that. And when he turned the card over, it was one of the aces. I said, you know, that's pretty neat. Can you do it again? He said, well, absolutely. As I said, I've developed this technique. All I need you to do is make sure there's no ace on the top, make sure there's no ace on the bottom, and I can cut to the second ace. And when he said that, he turned the card over, and indeed it was the second ace. I said, well, can I ask you a question? Can you do it face up? He kind of shrugged and said, well, face up or face down doesn't really matter to me. Usually in a game, we don't cut cards face up, but just for you, I will show you that it really doesn't matter. The technique works whether the deck is face up or the deck is face down. And he cut to the third ace. I was really fascinated at this point. I said, I tell you what, how about a little wager? The man kind of shrugged and said, well, it's your money to lose. What were you thinking? I said, I say $50 and you can't cut to the fourth and final ace. He said, my friend, I'll take your bet. Once again, he had me look at the bottom and the top of the deck to make sure that the ace wasn't there. And he cut to a card. Well, I was a little bit nervous, but I turned the card over. And I said, ha, that's not an ace. You owe me $50. The stranger said, well, not so fast. You see, this is my locator card. If you count down three from this card, you'll find that fourth and final ace. I went ahead and counted the cards out. But when I got to the third card, I thought, if this is an ace, I lose $50. So I thought I'd be slick. And I took that ace and palmed it and turned over the next card. I said, well, you owe me 50 bucks. The stranger kind of shrugged and he reached into his pocket, I thought for his money, but he pulled out a knife and slammed the blade between my fingers, the card, and the table. And he said, my friend, if that there is not that fourth and final ace, not only will I apologize to you, but 
I'll give you a hundred dollars. So when I went to turn the card over, sure enough, it was the fortune five dollars. He looked at me and said, son, never try to cheat a cheater at his own game, because that is how I lost my other hand. I'm Mark Timmers, welcome to the show. I've been an IT analyst for 30 years, so I know what I'm talking about. I'm one of the best in the trade, and I know my computers, and I know my software systems. Windows 10 and antivirus. This is all you need to know to save you that 90 or 40 pounds, 40 pounds to 90 pounds you spend every year for antivirus that you don't really need. Windows 7 couldn't have, came with Microsoft Essentials, which was Microsoft's freebie program. And it wasn't exactly the greatest, and it wasn't integrated into the system, because Microsoft lost some sort of court battle license and said it was unfair that the other, other companies can't use their own antivirus. Along came Windows 10, really new design development and everything by Microsoft, really excelled themselves, I will admit. And then you upgrade to Windows 10, and you found you still got Avast and all these others. And lo and behold, Windows 10 comes with Windows Defender, newly packaged, newly designed, and it has the latest antiviruses, and it's free. You don't have to pay a penny for it. It's all part of your Windows 10 upgrade, or the free upgrade that you got on Windows 7. So what you should do is just uninstall a vast and all these others, cancel your subscription, and then you've got Windows completely secured with Windows Defender, and you don't pay 30, 30 pounds a year, or 90 pounds for three year licenses. You know, unless you're looking at porn. Then that's your own lookout. Up to you. <laughs> what would William Shatner do? Fire. Brilliant. And that's what William Shatner would do. Why does crack feel so good? Is it the growers? that spend back-breaking hours working in the fields. Or the cow dung, which gives it its special, unique flavour. But if you want my honest opinion, it's all down to the unpredictable Irish weather. So I say, bring it on! Oh! What are you thinking? With crack? It's full of additives. Any time you try it, it will give you a kick. Once you start in it, it'll be hard to stop. Don't worry about it, love. You'll be grand. Ta-da! Not bad for Saturday night, lads. Huh? Oh, Jesus, lads. Tis good, all right. Cassidy's Crack Cocaine. 100% quality, 100% Irish, and 100% crack guaranteed. It's an understand. Just say hi for Patrick Stewart for me. Now, Patrick Stewart, I'll be in touch. Take care. Sorry about that, Jonathan Frakes. It's very needy for a director. Anyway, and now we will go over to Northern Ireland for our weather report with the wonderful Nicole McBride. How's it going over there, Nicole? Good afternoon, and welcome to the weather report for today in Northern Ireland's northeast coast. It's one of the few sunny days here in Northern Ireland with a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, which might as well be 30 degrees anywhere else. However, there is a 95% chance of rain and a strong wind coming in from Scotland. I've got my trusty umbrella to make sure that I don't look like a drowned rat. Oh, And now, the game. So, Valheim, the computer game. Really good game, it's still in the development stage, but you can buy it for around about 15 pounds on Steam and a few other places. One of the main things is you go straight into the game 
and you work your way up through the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, to the Iron Age and beyond and you have to kill various level of bosses to go to the next stage. By you have this arrow in the game that tells you the wind direction and if you look and you're hiding behind a tree you'll see this troll sniffing you out your scent. As long as you're away or not upwind he can't find you. is when you're fighting a monster and you get killed when you go back to fight that monster he's not got his points restored he's at the existing points for what you did so you got the chance of killing them a second time When you get to the Bronze Age, you start making iron and tin, forging it together, and then you get heavy armor so you can really take on the big monsters. And you work your way up through the Iron Age and so forth. That's all for me, Valheim. Great buy of the week. And the trolls are awesome! I know, I've been killed 50 times. See you later! Celebrity. Welcome, Gary Pierce, to What Would Shatner Do? How are you today? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. What is your new album called, Gary? It's called Deep Breath. So, how many tracks are on this album? Ooh, too many. Fifteen. Gary, that is amazing. How has the album done so far? surprisingly good actually given that it's been locked down etc yeah actually done pretty well in south america fantastic so gary why do you think your album has done so well maybe because they can't understand what i'm saying i don't know ha, 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 ha. very good gary so i believe you had two tracks from this album on a sci-fi called the bounty killers that's correct yeah two off of the album called uh, It's OK and Pressure. So, Gary, how did you get involved in the Bounty Killers or were you conned or coerced by the director? I was definitely coerced by the director. Bribery and, you know, all sorts going on. Amazing. How difficult was it to get the music for the Bounty Killers on track and right for the film? Um, there was a few adjustments. The director kept changing his mind on how long they should be and I kept having to re-edit them, but aside from that, it was no problem. No more difficult than working with a band. So, Gary, a question. Have you dated anyone famous other than myself? Um, I have, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say who. So, that is something you will take to the grave. I wouldn't say it's a secret, but, um, yeah, it's probably best left where it was. So, Gary, the final question. Knowing this is my show, which do you prefer, Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, of course, Star Trek. That's good news. Do you know anything else about Star Trek? Um... I like The Trouble with Tribbles. That was one of my favourite episodes. I forgot the title correct. Do you remember the Tribbles, the little fluffy things? 
Which season was it in? I can't tell you, I'm afraid. Oh, that's really a shame, Gary. What would I do? Well, I'd... Hire! Hold on one moment. Hello? Belinda on TV? You mean we've run out of time? Oh, you could have saved my ass. I'm glad I don't have to sing that song. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. I really owe you one. And, um, yeah, I'll have to deal with the sound guy next week. So, thanks very much. Cheers. So, here it is. Some Depeche Mode song from the 1990s. See you later. Catch you guys.